everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Today we're going to be doing another Roy DeMeo video. This, this one has to do with yet another hijacking. And it was bad. And um, although I did have to work with him after this incident, I really started to fear the guy. And don't forget, back at that time, I didn't even know who the hell he was. Okay, so it's 1974, and I get another, I get another call from Joey. I need you to, you wanna make money? You wanna make three grand? <laughs> three grand was, you, you, could, you could buy a new car with three grand. I mean, it was a lot of money. And I go, yeah, of course, okay, I want you here in 20 minutes. Every time Joey Bertini wanted me there in 20 minutes, there was a, a, a crime that happened that I had to go to. And the reason that he did that, and he knew damn well, I lived in Aqueduct Avenue in the Bronx, he knew damn well I can't get to that location, to South Jamaica, in 20 minutes. Why he had the 20 minute rule, I don't know why it was 20 minutes. But I do know what the rule was about. He would never allow me, and I guess anybody else, to do a pre-planned crime. Pre-planned crime, PPC. <laughs> Let's call it a PPC. He would never give me a heads up on, okay, you guys, we're gonna have a tractor coming in, tractor trailer coming in, I want you here at eight o'clock in the morning. Well, he didn't do that. And for good reason. I mean, although he trusted me, he didn't trust me 100%, nor do I believe he trusted anybody 100%. So that's why it was always 20 minutes, get here, so that I guess I couldn't rat him out, or I don't know. So anyway, this time, it was like seven o'clock in the morning. And, and Joey never got to the shop until 10 or 11, because he was coming all the way from, um, Westchester, New York, to, to uh, South Jamaica. I, I don't even know how long that takes. But anyway, um, but this time, he goes, I want you here in 20 minutes. Be at the shop 20 minutes, and, and you're going to be working. I said, okay. Get in the car, and um, I couldn't make it in no 20 minutes. I couldn't make it in an hour and 20 minutes. It took me two hours in rush hour traffic. I don't know. So I got to the party late. The mayor was there. They had a tractor trailer pulled already up to the door. They had, they had another guy. They had DeMarco. I think, I think it was his, his, um, his Jewish crimey, that Chris Rosenberg or whatever. I think it was him that was there, Joey and me. And we had to unload a 52-foot trailer filled with Gillette razor blades. It was a huge score. I don't know, I, I mean, it could have been in a, a million dollar, you know, if you figure that every Gillette razor blade cost three ninety five dollars back then, and times that, how many you could put into a tractor trailer, holy crap, that's a lot of money. So anyway, we're, so I show up at the party late. They're already, they're unloading the, the, the truck. And this time I see not one, not two, but three U-Haul, box trucks they rented. So as we would unload the tractor into the warehouse, then the, the other trucks would come. And I guess there was three partners. I guess maybe it was that guy, Chris, Roy, and, um, and Joey, that would split it up. I don't know how they divvied it up, but once they got it in the, in the warehouse and they got rid of the tractor trailer, then the, that part came into play which I didn't have any part of. So anyway, so I get to the party late and DeMarco starts with me, starts with me right away. Joey's defending me. I knew you were told to be here. I couldn't, the traffic, you told me at seven o'clock in the morning, it's rush hour. You, I, I, I did the best I can. What do you want me to do, fly over the things? And then he said something to Joey. He, fucked, like he, um, he mumbled something under his breath. Now don't forget, Roy DeMeo wasn't afraid of no Kevin Marr, but Roy DeMeo was afraid of a Joey Bikini. And he mumbled something under his breath, and Joey said, 
Um, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Leave the kid alone. Don't talk to the kid. And then he said something else about me. And I said, hey, Roy, you know, I heard that. I, I, what's your problem with me? Then I started getting, and he's, he's uh, don't forget, I didn't know. I didn't know that guy was a, mur a serial killer. I, I didn't know. But I wanted to slap the crap out of him. I mean, you're talking shit about me right in front of me. He's 20 feet away. I can hear every word he said. And then Joey kicked in again, and he said, I told you again. I told you again. Don't talk to him. You and he, I don't know what else. He just got in his face. Joey put his finger in his face. And when Joey does that, you know what the next thing coming is? Smack. And he was going to get another smack. So anyway, I, I was just so pissed off. So we start unloading. There's three of us. Even Joey rolled up his sleeves. And as Roy goes into the tractor, he's wearing a white button-down shirt. And I see these brown stains on the back of his sleeve. Then I look a little closer, and I see all these little tiny... Uh, brown marks on his shirt and then he reached up and I saw more brown stains but and then I recognized them I know what they are they're blood his then I'm looking at his hands he had blood on his hands so I go what and I then they start talking about how this load came from out of state had out of state plates on the tractor and the trailer so I'm unloading it with him. Now I'm in the trailer. And if anybody's out there ever unloaded a tractor trailer without, they were on pallets, but we didn't have a, 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 a high low, whatever you call that thing. We had a, we had a snap, cut the, the ribbons and, and move them all out. And uh, there was a few times where I was like 25 feet into the trailer working with this guy. And he was just giving, he was just giving me the dirtiest looks and I'm looking at all the blood. Then he says, he says to his other guy, get me my cigarettes. They're in, the, they're in the trailer, the tractor. So I was already down. So, so DeMarco's in the trailer, halfway in the trailer. And the other guy, Chris, I, I think his name was, tells me, go get the cigarettes. So the cigarettes for him, I don't know, somebody wanted the cigarettes. I go to the trailer, I opened it up, and holy crap, it's filled with blood. On both seats, the door panels, they're all filled with blood. The fuck, somebody got killed in there. Now again, at this time, I didn't know who he was. When I'm looking at all of this blood, I'm going, could somebody live after losing this much blood? And I've seen it on his shirt, his hands. So I woke up. He lifts, uh, the, I, I throw the cigarettes to, to the guy. They lift me up on the platform. He comes out and, he, and I, I threw him the cigarettes. He goes, what are you doing? And he, 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 I asked him to get my cigarettes. And Roy knew that the cigarettes were in the tractor. And he knew I just saw all that blood because it was, they didn't try to hide it. They didn't try to wash it off. They didn't fucking, they left the fucking blood there. And then he went right to Joey Fuel. And, then, and, and again, I said, hey, I can hear you. What's, what's the, and I went up to him and I said, what's your problem with me? What, what do you, I, you know, I'm working for Joey. I'm not working for you. Why do you keep talking shit about me, dude? And then he wanted to kill me. I guess he wanted to kill me. But Joey was standing right there. He said, never mind, dad, go in. So I'm going, holy crap, what did, what did I just get myself into? There was blood on both seats, both, both uh, door panels, the, the, the dash, the fucking, it, it was all over the place. So I unloaded it. I got three grand, and I think it took us like two hours to get all the stuff out. And then Joey told me to leave. He told me to leave because they didn't want me to see, the, the, I, I saw the U-Haul trucks, I knew what they were, the, what, what that was about. Now they're going to unload it there and dump the tractor trailer. So anyway, so I think that was a pretty interesting story. And try as I may, I always wound up either working with Roy DeMeo or one of his flunkies. And then I started stealing cars. So we're going to be talking about this in the next couple of vlogs. We are going to be going to, um, to uh, New York to film some more DeMeo stuff. But... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it for now. 
Um, we got a lot more inter interesting stories about Roy DeMeo. And, and let me tell all you viewers out there, and all my, I don't know if I would call them competition, guys that are out there doing videos about mafia guys that never was in the mafia, that are only rehashing newspaper clippings and court documents, okay? I mean, th these are stories that have never, ever, ever been told. And although I was a confidential informant for many law enforcement agencies, I never once, and they're all going to be shocked about all of these things that I did prior to me being a registered confidential informant. And, but I never, ever, ever thought for one minute to rat my dear friend Joey Bikini out. Never, ever entered my mind. And this is the first time that these stories are coming out. These are all exclusive stories. And um, anyway, and so since this exclusive stories that you can't hear from no place else please guys push the button the subscribe the like the you know i would do it for you thanks everybody and god bless